everybody. Thank you for joining me today. That was Autumn Leaves. Um, I took a poll a couple of weeks ago and asked you guys what you wanted me to teach next. Um, Chord Melodies 1. So really happy about that. I wanted to teach that for a long time. Um, but before, before we go any further, what's important about chord melodies for guitar? Well, when we think of ourselves as guitar players, well, there's a lot of roles that we can fill. For instance, uh, rhythm. You know, whether you're playing with a metal band, jazz band, blues, whatever the case is, you'll be playing rhythm. And then you have leads. Sometimes you're playing instrumentals with lead notes. But there's another thing that's really important is playing solo. Now playing solo, you can also sing and all that, but let's pretend that you're playing a gig and you don't sing. Uh, let's say this establishment wants an instrumental only type of situation. Uh, what's really useful about this, it's like playing a whole track just on your acoustic instrument. And the way I decided to structuralize this is when it, with chord melodies is three different tips. So on those three different tips, um, we break down the song structure. And the way I've decided to break this down, the way I was taught was when you think of chord melodies, you think of it as kind of like a pyramid. So your three parts, the bottom of your pyramid, you have your bass and your rhythm. That's your groove, that's, that's what's really controlling the bottom part of it. Um, that's what really gives it a lot of the style. And the middle part, think of it as like a chord structure, your chord tones, your color. Um, the job of the middle part of the pyramid isn't so much to move, but to give it that color. And you'll see what I mean here in a bit. And then the top of that pyramid is your melody, the most important part of it that's gonna dictate the rest of the pyramid, the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it functions. So in this example with uh, Autumn Leaves, um, we, we can break it down. So. The first part, let's talk about the bass and the rhythm. So based on this, this is an old jazz standard. So um, it's just a bass line that I decided to use. So the bass line sounds something like this. Cool, really simple. Doesn't sound that important yet, but once you get all the stuff together, it really uh, pronounces itself. So, second part is your chord structure and your chord tones. So, if I was playing with a band and I was just playing simple, not trying to groove too hard, it would be something like this with the chords. And before I go on with the chords, what's actually happening, it's two, five, one patterns going down the circle of fifths. So, it's something like this. simple, really basic. And finally, our melody. Melody is also really simple. I chose this song just because there's so much room in the melody. You can make a lot of things sound out. But the way the melody works, it ascends up, leaps to a perfect fourth, and sequentially it just descends down. So the way it would sound... Oh, sorry. Really simple. It sounds almost boring. I mean, especially the way I just played it. Um, so those are your three parts. Now we have to think about how to combine them all together. Again, that melody is going to dictate everything we do. So to start off with the music, the first bar, the first measure has no chord, so there's no bass. It's just melodic. And this is the kind of part when you play solo, instead of just playing the first three notes just bare like that, um, I like to do stuff like use octaves, any kind of intervals that are appropriate. So the first three notes are going to sound. All right. So we're about to enter the first bar that has the first chord in it. Um, the way to dictate everything is to think about where the melody is going. We have to hit that C right there. That's the highest point. 
but we need something to support it, which the chord is an A minor seventh chord. So if we use this as a frame, and we combine it with a C, which is the highest point of the melody, we get what we're looking for. Okay, again, I can't emphasize how important it is to have your melody note in any kind of sequence, any kind of chord structure to be the highest point. You really want this to sound out and this frame to support it. Three, one. Now the next thing is being aware of what's happening in your music, whether you have sheet music or you know that um, you're playing maybe with a drone, you're maybe just playing solo all the way, there's no drone tracks, there's nothing behind you, knowing what's happening in the chord. So earlier when I was doing the sequence of chords, I was doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Melodically though, when the A minor enters, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, melodically, what's happening, so it's, here comes a melodic note. One, two, three, four, one. It actually invades this D7 chord, that next measure. Um, that's okay. Uh, anytime you're breaking this down, it's okay to step on other chords, as long as diatonically it makes sense. You don't want to sacrifice this melodic note to make sure that it's structurally sounding good for the chord progression or the bass or anything like that. Sorry, I messed that up. Sorry. One, so, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's the next part. So we just ended the sequence. Two, three, four. One. Cool. So this is where it gets interesting, where you start to actually see patterns. So that's the note we ended on for that sequence. Our next sequence sounds like this. So we start on this D, our next chord is a D7. So to combine them is pretty simple, all you do is structuralize that D7 and have that D as being the, the top note, the octave. This is where it gets interesting. So we know that this D has to go to this E right here. Okay, your bass line is going to move at the same time. So it's D7. Your D on your bass note went up to that A. So your E is going to want to go to this F sharp over here. Your A is going to move down a half step to this A flat. You're at the last beat. Now let's start over. sequence. So we know where we go to this B. The next chord is a G major 7th. So the way it would end, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, it bleeds. If you're wondering about the bass line and the functions to that, I will be doing a separate lesson on that, but just to note right now is what's actually happening. A lot of times in modern music, it's all about the groove. Um, people complain there's not a lot of chords and not enough bass lines. The whole point to modern pop music is to have a groove and let the melody really sing out. So I will be doing a lesson on walking bass lines and really structuralizing these chord melodies more, but to really emphasize things that just, this is all part of swing music, jazz music, um, just to stylize things. The next note, we, we're hanging on to that B. So the next sequence, it's C. One, two, three, four, one. So the next chord is a C major seven. So let's just play the octave. Okay. The bass is gonna move again with the melody. So this C is gonna move down to this B. This C is going up to this D, so. 
One thing I also wanted to mention through this whole time, in the middle of these two things moving, your bass line and your melody line, your core tones, your color, is staying constant like I mentioned before. Um, the function to that is to add the color. So, C, B, we gotta go to this E, our bass line's gonna go to the G. So. And then we're gonna end our sequence with this F sharp. Should be an F sharp five. So we'll start over. And the way we're going to end it is our last chorus is B7. And we're just going to add octaves. Two, three, four, one. So to start over. Um, so that's just the basics, my, my three tips on structuralizing these chord melodies. Um, I know this seems like it's a lot of hard work with these jazz standards, but the more you work on it, especially with music like that, the easier everything else is. Um, it's, it takes a lot of time, but the more you do it, the easier it is to analyze and you get, you get really used to seeing patterns happen, especially with me with jazz, I just, that's how I grew into playing was jazz music. But this really goes into all forms of modern pop music. Um, I'll be having another lesson soon. That's, um, I don't wanna say it's a part two of this, but I wanna talk more about modern music and actually using these kind of concepts in life situations. Um, I'll tell you guys more about that in time. Uh, but up until then, my name is Alan. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great day.